So we're going to look at making some simple games in Python and where better to start with the classic uh, game of Hangman. So I'm going to think of a hidden word and I'm going to draw some dashes. Okay, so you know, the person might start off, you know, the usual choice of first letter. They'll say, well, I'm going to choose an E. So we're going to write E down here. So we know we've picked that and then and then if that letter appears in the hangman we will draw the letter in in the right in the right place okay so we'll do another guess and we say with this time we'd like a q please rich so we say oh well there's no q in this word so we're going to actually say we're going to draw part of the the scaffold and then they'll say well we'll try a c that's not in there either, so we'll draw a bit more of the scaffold. You kind of see how this is going to go. Um, and we need to think about, okay, so we understand the basic mechanics of the game. Um, so how does the, what are the potential outcomes for the game? Well, in, in this simplified version, we'll say, well, we either guess. Um, we keep, keep guessing until we get all the letters guessed. So we will say we'll guess an, an E, an L and a P and a H and a T and an N and an A and then we've guessed our letter so that's one way that the game can end and the other way that the game can end is that we keep making wrong guesses because either we've been really dumb and we've guessed the same letter twice so we keep drawing that scaffold or we just don't guess any of the letters that are, are in the word or we don't guess enough of them and eventually we run out of lives and the man is hanged and it's game over so we've got those two conditions for finishing the game and in the initial um, simplified version of this program we'll just look at modeling this aspect of the game if you want to create a computer model of something that you do in real life, the first step is to break the problem down into smaller parts. And the second part of that is to try and figure out which of those things we're going to actually do with a computer. Breaking the problem down into smaller parts is called decomposition. And then figuring out which things we are actually going to do on the computer is called abstraction. So in the real world, I had to think of and remember my hidden word in the computer program I'm going to do that by creating a string called hidden word and then storing that in the program. I also need to draw the blanks. Now I just counted how many letters were in the word in the real world but in this case for each letter that the computer finds that's in the word it will draw a blank and it doesn't matter how many letters are in the word it will draw the appropriate number of blanks. I've used a for loop that repeats an operation for each letter that the computer finds in the hidden word. In this case, it prints a blank in the space. Now I've used the command end equals open speech marks, close speech marks to prevent the computer drawing the new blanks on different lines. Okay, so you know, the person might start off, you know, the usual choice of first letter. They'll say, well, I'm going to choose an E. So we're going to write E down here. So we know we've picked that. So when we consider the next part of the problem, we need to enable the user to input guesses and we need to have some mechanism for storing those guesses. And it's probably a good idea at this stage to notify the user if they've made duplicate guess. And at this stage, we don't really need to consider other parts of the problem, such as checking to see whether that's in the word or not. We'll begin by creating a blank list called guest list. Then we'll assume for now that the user is going to be allowed to make an infinite number of guesses. So we'll use a while true loop. So using while true creates an unconditional loop that will continue looping forever or until we break the loop. We follow this with a selection statement that essentially asks the question if the letter that's being guessed is already in the list, we'll warn the user or do something. Um, and if the letter is not in the list, we will just add it to the list of guesses. We're not doing anything else at the, at the moment. We're not checking the guesses against the word, just identifying whether or not the guess has been made 
or whether we need to add that new guest to a list. As you can observe, you can see that I'm entering lots of different letters and it will identify if I enter a letter more than once. Now, what I want to now do is just check to see whether or not the program has appended the guesses to the list. And you can see that that's also shown. And, and then if that letter appears in the hangman, we will draw the letter in in the right, in the right place. The next problem requires a slightly different solution to the one that we demonstrate in real life in that we can't just have blanks on the screen which are then filled in by the computer. In effect, what we have to do is redraw the blanks and the letters every single time the player makes a guess. And you'll notice that I'm indenting this part of the code uh, under that uh, while true loop from earlier because this is going to be the main program loop. And we're going to carry out this operation every single, every single time that the player makes a guess. The way that we're going to tackle this is as follows. Firstly, we'll use a for loop to iterate through every single letter in the hidden word. And then for each of those letters, we'll ask the question, is the letter in the hidden word in the list of guesses that we've made? And if it is, we'll print the letter. And if it's not, we'll print a blank. You'll notice that I'm using the end equals here. Um, so when it prints out, it prints out all on the same line rather than being one line under the other. Once the blanks and letters are printed, the computer will create an extra line and that's facilitated by the blank print statement that's outside of the for loop. So let's summarize and see what the program does so far. We can make guesses. The computer will tell us if we've made a duplicate guess and correct guesses will be filled in to the blanks until the word is complete. And then we've guessed our letter. So that's one way that the game can end old. Or we just don't guess any of the letters that are, are in the word or we don't guess enough of them. And eventually we run out of lives and the man is hanged and it's game over. In the demonstration, we drew the scaffold for the hangman. But in this simplified version, we'll just deal with this problem by using a lives system. And we'll begin by creating a variable an integer variable called lives and we'll set that to an arbitrary number which in this case is five. We initialize this variable outside of the main game loop because we only want the lives to be reset to five at the start of the game. I'm going to set it so the player loses a life if they make a duplicate guess or if they guess a letter that isn't in the hidden word. Notice I'm adding a line of code that will reduce the number of lives by one if the guess is already in the guess list. I also need to add some code that checks to see whether or not the letter the player has guessed is actually in the word in the first place. I'm about to enter this new code and I wonder if you can spot the mistake I make. Don't worry if you can't, I'll explain the error later. Finally, I need to add some code that will break from the loop if the number of lives is less than one. In other words, if the players run out of lives. And if that happens, the main game loop will end and it will say game over. See what happens when the programs run and see if you can spot that error I was talking about earlier. Did you spot the error? Of course you did. This line of code should have said if the guess is in the hidden word, not if it's in the guess list. Let me correct that error and we'll run the program again. 
as expected, when we make duplicate guesses, we lose a life. When we get a guess that's not in the word, we lose a life. And eventually, and quite quickly, we run out of lives and it's game over. Now we have to ask ourselves, how does the computer know when we've guessed the word? It knows that the word has been guessed because it hasn't had to print any blanks out. So what we need to do is to get the computer to count how many times it prints a blank. Before we print our blanks and letters, we'll set a variable called blank count, which is an integer variable to zero. And every single time we print a blank, we'll add one to that count. Then at the end of the game loop, we simply ask, is the number of blank counts zero? And if it is, that must mean we've guessed the word. We can then print a congratulatory message for the user and break from that loop. Here I'm just adding a quick message to tell the player that they've lost the game. And now we've completed our two conditions for game over. Either the player runs out of lives and loses or the player guesses all the letters and wins the game. Let's run the program and check that that works. So as you can see, when we successfully guess all the letters in the word, we get a message saying well done and it's game over. Try modifying this basic game by changing the hidden word or the number of lives. Test it on another person and get some feedback. In the next video, we will look at improving the game in the following ways. One, we'll set up some way of selecting words randomly from a list and including some kind of difficulty level. Secondly, we'll look at drawing an actual hangman rather than just using the live system. We'll look at improving the user interface of the menu and making better use of procedures and functions to, pr to improve program efficiency. If you enjoyed this video, please drop me a like or a sub, or if you think I could have done better, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.